Collecting things in video games has been a time-honored tradition since the 70s. From Super Mario to Assassin's Creed, picking up random objects off the ground is something every gamer has done at some point. But there's one genre that takes collecting to a whole new level. Today on Game Files, we're diving into the ultimate genre where collecting objects isn't just a side activity, it's the entire point of the game. I speak, of course, of collectathons. First, a definition. Plenty of games feature collectibles for characters to pick up, but what defines a collectathon is that those collectibles are used to progress further in the game, whereupon you must pick up more collectibles. There are other quantifiers that people use to further define a collectathon large open worlds that can be visited in any order, unlockable abilities, multiple kinds of items to collect, but at its core, all that's required is the focus on collecting items to progress. The prime example of what a collectathon actually is also happens to be the first example of one. Super Mario 64 is widely viewed as the first collectathon because it was the first 3D game where you must collect a set number of items, in this case, Power Stars, to unlock new levels to advance. There are multiple levels to explore and you can jump back and forth between them to collect stars provided they're unlocked. There are other collectibles you have to pick up, such as the red coins that can be found in every level, but the main objective is always Power Stars. There's a lot going on in Super Mario 64 when you think about it, but the beauty of it and the reason why it remains a timeless classic today is that it's actually pretty simple. The basic moves that you use at the start can easily get you to the end of the game, and the objectives you need to complete are easy to understand, and the levels aren't overwhelming in design. If you go back and play it, you'd be pretty surprised at how small the levels actually are. But the freedom of movement in Super Mario 64 actually makes it feel bigger. While Nintendo may have created the collectathon genre, they're not the name most associated with it. Since Super Mario 64 was a huge success, many developers sought to copy and build upon the formula that made it great, and none became as widely known as the works of Rareware. Now called Rare Inc., Rareware at the time was best known for its work with Nintendo on the Donkey Kong Country series, as well as GoldenEye for the N64. Their next project was a collectathon 3D platformer, much like Super Mario 64, called Banjo Kazooie. Starring a bear named Banjo and his loudmouth bird friend Kazooie, the game took many of the ideas that Super Mario 64 built and expanded upon them. Power Stars became Jiggies, the levels were bigger, Banjo's movement was more complicated, and the number of collectibles grew exponentially. Banjo Kazooie was a hit, and though a sequel would come a few years later, Rareware decided to strike while the iron was hot and release a collectathon starring a classic Nintendo character in the meantime. It would also be a perfect example of what a bad collectathon is Donkey Kong 64. Walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smell. Donkey Kong 64 sure was a thing. Here is a list of all the collectibles in each level in DK64. 100 bananas, 5 golden bananas, a banana coin, a banana medal, and a blueprint. Did I mention that the game has 5 playable characters and you have to collect all of those on each character since each of them have different collectibles? Welcome to DK64, also known as Purgatory. Despite being well received at the time of release, history has not been kind to it. Donkey Kong 64, along with Banjo Kazooie, demonstrated what happens when collectathons go wrong. Their main issue was that the worlds were too big, the controls were too slow, and there were far too many different collectibles to collect. With these, collectathons crossed the line from fun to tedious pretty quickly. Of course, Nintendo consoles weren't the only platform where the genre had a foothold. The PlayStation was home to many collectathons that remain beloved to this day. None are better known than the Spiral the Dragon series. The trilogy on the original PlayStation features many of the hallmarks of collectathons, and the recent remasters of them prove that they still hold up years later. You can even argue Crash Bandicoot was a collectathon. Sure, it was linear, but you did need to collect objects to progress, and there were plenty of hidden secrets to uncover in the 3D worlds. Naughty Dog's follow up for the PlayStation 2, Jack and Daxter, was a more traditional collectathon by comparison, but was still just as good. 
Yet all things must come to an end eventually. The genre's heyday was in the 90s on the N64, and as times change, so did tastes. Come the 2000s, 3D platforming was shifted aside in favor of newer genres, shooters, and multiplayer-focused games. Nintendo was the main developer that was keeping collectathons alive in this era, primarily thanks to the Mario franchise. Super Mario Sunshine, as well as the Super Mario Galaxy series for the Wii, were really the only collectathons of this era to achieve widespread success. For every Super Mario Galaxy, there were games like Voodoo Vince and Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Even the odd game that achieved cult classic status like Psychonauts failed to reach the highs the genre had seen not even five years earlier. Of course, collecting objects didn't go away. They just weren't the primary focus. Assassin's Creed had feathers, Crackdown had orbs, the Arkham series had Riddler trophies, etc, etc. For all intents and purposes, collectathons quietly faded into gaming history. That is, until recently. Nostalgia has brought collectathons back into focus as people who grew up with them bring the genre back in new ways. Ukulele is the prime example. Crowdfunded on Kickstarter, it's a spin on the Banjo-Kazooie formula, hearkening back to it with its two main characters and absolutely gigantic worlds. Similarly, A Hat in Time made its mark thanks to its fast-paced controls and objective-based collecting that was similar to Super Mario 64. And in 2017, Nintendo released the ultimate collectathon in Super Mario Odyssey. It was one of the best games of the year, thanks in part to its reinvention of Mario mechanics that recall the best of what made Super Mario 64 great. And with 999 power moons to collect, there was a lot of collecting to be had. Of course, it's unlikely that the genre will return to the place of dominance that it once held in the industry, but even so, it's likely that now that it's come back, collectathons will continue to play a part in the video game industry for years to come.